my screen up on the Thanks so much for uh, for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Again, my name is Don Stewart. I'm Senior Channel Account Manager here at Wombat. And the topic of today is our uh, most recent uh, survey and, and study of, about the state of the fish. So why do we do the research? And regardless of the technical advances, advances we make, we need to realize that there's a human element in cybersecurity, except that we rely on our end user's ability to protect our organization through making good decisions. Your organization is secure only as strong as your weakest link. And our report shows that while awareness is increasing, it also shows risky behaviors still exist. The number of connected devices only continues to grow with smartphones and tablets, and the threat of mobile security breaches is very high. And while networks are secure, it only takes one bad decision or one tap by an end user who is working for, from home or remotely to compromise an entire organization. Fighting phishing attacks is no longer simply deleting a desperate message from a Nigerian prince. Phishing has become a complex and dangerous threat with attacks are becoming more and more specialized. And finally, phishing attacks cost organizations in many ways. Quantifying the, the damage of a successful attack is not black and white. An attack can cost your organization time, money, manpower, and in some cases, your reputation. And then with the rise of ransomware and the threat of business email compromise, the potential cost of successful attack is as high as it's ever been. So for the last uh, three or four years, Wombat and ThreatSim has have been conducting our State of the Fish report. Uh, this year, we researched simulated uh, phishing attacks sent out between two, October 2015 and September 2016. Now, while the study isn't a scientific study, it does offer important insights into what product, what proactive organizations are doing to better prepare their end users to identify identify and avoid phishing attacks. New this year is we've included over 2,000 employees in the U.S. and in the U.K. to gain some insight into the average end user's knowledge of phishing and ransomware. So what are some of the key findings? Organizations are respecting the risk. Although the increase in organizations measure, although with the increase in organizations measuring risk, there is still an increase in those taking an approach to educate their end users. Simulated attacks combined with education and training is working. But while the quick click rates are improving, that doesn't mean that the job is over. Continuous education and training is the key to driving continued success. The quantity of phishing attacks seems to be slowing. Only 51% of the organizations reported being attacked by a fish this year down from 60% in our 2015 survey. Then finally, although users know better, they are still demonstrating risky behaviors in areas beyond phishing. In fact, where criminals are hiding in an effort to collect insightful information and data so that they can, they can conduct more targeted uh, attacks, safe web browsing, safely surfing the, the web, using social media, handling sensitive data, remote working or traveling risks, ransomware, to name a few. So this year, as I mentioned before, we decided to uh, see what the man on the street knew about phishing. We partnered with a third-party firm and surveyed more than 2,000 people uh, working in both the U.S. and in the U.K. to gauge their understanding of phishing. The results are encouraging, and at least awareness is growing, but knowledge is only half the battle. Along with phishing, we also wanted to understand how much the regular person knows about ransomware. We all know that in 2016, we saw a significant rise in ransomware, but the research shows that the average employee's knowledge of ransomware paled in comparison to that of phishing. In both groups, nearly half could not even take a guess on what ransomware was. When asked about their organization's experience with ransomware, the numbers paled 
the number of that paid, I'm sorry, the number that paid was surprisingly low, as many other sources have cited figures as high as two thirds. We think that this number is based on the increasing intelligence that organizations have around ransomware and their efforts to become smarter about backing up their files. As well, there's a realization and acceptance that there's no honor among thieves and that paying a ransomware reward doesn't necessarily mean the scammers will keep their word. And in fact, it may encourage them to strike again in the future. Well, back to the topic of phishing. Our survey, our survey of InfoSec professionals showed that similar results to that conducted in 2016 anti-phishing working groups phishing trends report that showed phishing is not necessarily growing in frequency, but is evolving from shotgun approaching to more personalized targeted attacks. And even with a 10% decrease in the quantity, there is still 76% of the organizations that report being a victim of a phishing attack in 2016. We know that phishing can be devastating to an organization, but we want to learn more about these impacts and how our respondents defined impact. Disruption of employees' activities and malware infections were the most reported. Along with the impact, we wanted to understand how our respondents defined and measured the cost of phishing. Loss of information was most cited with the second being employee productivity. And again, we see that one of the top respondents is related and associated to the organization's employees. We've seen our own customers include the cost of phishing around the remediation efforts of infected PCs. After the presentation, maybe we could take a moment or two to uh, understand if the audience um, has any other ways that they're measuring the cost of, of phishing and how you're justifying spending on preventing it. On a side note, there are a number of related um, studies out there that help define what the cost of phishing is. And Ponyman Research has done a number of studies showing this cost could, could hit nearly $4 million. If you're interested in this information, please let iSecure know as part of your follow-up, and they'll be happy to forward you along with the study. Right, JoJo? So let's take a look at end user susceptibility to attacks. So if you think about it, you probably have many unsuspecting end users out there navigating dangerous phishing emails each and every day without understanding what risks surround them or even what to look for. Just like in the movie Finding Nemo, by the end of the movie, Marlin the Clownfish finally understands the threats around him and knows how to identify them and avoid attack. If done right, your end users can have the same level of experience, but in a much safer environment with a lot less trauma and a lot less risk through the use of simulated attacks, training, and reinforcement techniques uh, to support the right behavior. Because in the real world of cybersecurity and phishing, Trial and error could only could lead to significant losses and unrepairable damage to an organization's reputation. So year over year, the types of email templates our administrators have used have been re remained fairly constant. We know that end users are more likely to click on emails that that, that they would expect to find. Uh, coming from a work environment and less likely to click on something more consumer related. This chart shows the click rates of the four template categories that we cover. Corporate emails, those are the ones that mimic official cor uh, corporate communications like uh, email, full, bo uh, full email box notifications, spam quarantines, invoices, and other types of communications you would expect to see from within your organization in your inbox. Consumer emails, these try to replicate special offers or accounts that you may have, they may already have uh, on your personal, in your personal life, such as frequent flyer miles, 
password resets, uh, notifications from your bank, et cetera. Commercial emails, these imitate emails that are business related but not necessarily directly tied to an organization. Examples include phishing, yeah, phishing, shipping notifications, insurance renewals, wire transfers, et cetera. And then lastly, cloud emails. These are emails that appear, that appear to be business related and include messages to download documents from a cloud server or to edit or create a document with an online file sharing service. The most popular attack template categories we just went through, here are some of the most popular attack templates. They include password updates, corporate e-facts, shipping notifications, email password change, and email quota alerts. And you'll notice that four out of the five are more corporate related. The most successful attack template that we saw was called Message from the Administrator with a click rate of over 30%. People appear to be much more comfortable with emails that look like they're coming from inside the organization and they fall for these quite often. And this is where more education is obviously needed. It's not hard for attackers to spoof internal email addresses and to mimic those internal communications. So that takes us over to spear phishing. So with social networks and Google, it's very easy to find out personal information on somebody. And while nearly there's been nearly a 10% decrease in the reported number of spear phishing, 61% of organizations reported that they experienced this personalized form of phishing. This chart shows that while spear phishing can impact click rates, it is a manageable threat with click rates being reduced after one year of security awareness and training programs. Keys here are to help employees spot those small telltale signs within an email that it's a fish. We see the best and most impactful way of doing this is through some combination of education, simulated attack, and reinforcements of those concepts. Our independent end-user survey also asked how respondents blurred the lines between work and home. The survey showed that, cultural, that there are cultural differences between the U.S. and U.K. employees, but most importantly, it shows a large risk that organizations face with data connectivity and how we impact, interact with work and personal devices. This shows that even with the most sophisticated email filtering and infrastructure in place, if your employees are checking their Gmail or Yahoo accounts on a work PC or have downloaded a suspicious app on their smartphone, your organization is exposed and vulnerable. Again, the knowledge and good security behavior of your employees is going to be critical. So what industries are improving? It's not all negative. In fact, we saw industries make great strides in 2016 improving their click rates with professional services and technology posting uh, very encouraging results. It should be noted that telecommunications posted and made, made significant progress. It also needs to be noted that, I'm, that telecommunication, I'm sorry, had a 26% increase over their rate from last year's report. And the energy segment had a fairly low click rate last year of only 9%. So it's great to see that their continued improvement as a critical infrastructure protection uh, evolves. And then lastly, on finance, last year had good numbers, 12%, and we see that they continue to make good strides in reducing their overall click rates. With the, growing under, with the growing understanding and acceptance that a filter or work email is useless if an, if an end user clicks, our report also asked what technology, organiz, what technology organizations were using to reduce the risk of phishing and found that technologies are changing with the employee element in mind. 
This shows some of the decreases in the reported use of email and spam filters and outbound proxy protection, but a significant increase in malware analysis and URL wrapping. I don't know about you, but I was particularly surprised in, in the decrease in outbound proxy protection. I would have expected that data protection and data loss prevention would be a growing area. Some of the other data that we collect is about software and plugging vulnerabilities at the endpoint. In our system, every time somebody interacts with a moment, this is type of the type of information that we collect uh, at the endpoint. And there was a significant reduction in all categories from last year and a 73% reduction in the outdated Adobe Flash, which continues to reflect our thoughts from last year's report, which is everybody is trying to get rid of it. And as we predicted, there was a rise in the awareness of Java as resulted in the aggressive reduction in vulnerabilities since the 2015 report. At the end of the day, measurement is, is key to the truly understanding the success of any program. Setting goals and baselines from the beginning to measure against is an absolute must in programs, and we're glad to see the increase in those who are measuring their organization's susceptibility to phishing and continuing to train their end users on how to identify and avoid phishing attacks. With 92% of the respondents training their end users against phishing, we wanted to know how. Our respondents showed that a majority opting for phishing simulation exercises and computer-based training with the other two categories of in-person training and monthly communications employed by more than 40%. Even more encouraging is that 52% said that they were able to quantify a, redu a, reducing, a reduction in phishing susceptibility from their efforts, and, a, and that's a 40% increase over last year. And once again, we ask our respondents if they assess the risk of each end user poses to their organization with 72% saying yes, a dramatic increase over the 64%, uh, uh, dramatic increase of 64% over last year. We also asked what critical infosec professionals, we also asked what criteria infosec professionals are using to determine risk with security awareness and training and business risk assessment leading the responses. We know that the information security professionals have to assess risk in order to be able to make decisions on their toolbox. And now, more than ever, InfoSec teams need to provide data-driven reasoning. This is why we're not surprised to see that user security awareness and training it is being used more and more to justify these expenditures. So what are we seeing with respect to the reduction of phishing attacks? Let me spend a minute or two talking a little bit about how, what Wombat's approach is to, to the phishing attacks and why our customers are seeing such a dramatic decrease. Our solution is, is based on learning science principle, which is the science around how adults learn. These principles are incorporated in every aspect of our solution and are focused on helping the employee not only gain the knowledge regarding what is risky situations, but more importantly, how they should behave and how they should act when confronted with a risky situation. To drive this behavior change, we've deployed a unique method and proven methodology to help the average employee understand, recognize, and react properly to various security situations. It really starts off with knowledge assessment. 
So what we want to do is we want to understand what does the employee know innately and how do they react to a mock attack. Based upon those interactions, we're able to identify where there are knowledge gaps and can help identify which training the employee needs and which training they don't because they have a, a, a firm command over the, over the topic. So in the education phase, it really starts off at a point of failure education moment through what we call teachable moments. These are intervention messaging that, ha that uh, takes place at the point of failure. So if an employee is part of a simulated attack campaign, they click on the link or open the document, um, they're presented with this teachable moment. That's the point in time where the employees expect one reaction. Maybe it's going to a website, maybe it's to see a document that is supposed to open. And they're delivered with this web page that comes up and their palms get a little sweaty. They start to panic that they may have uh, just compromised the organization. It's at that moment in time when they're most susceptible to reading what's in front of them and understanding that this is, in fact, an opportunity to learn. So in addition to the point of failure or the incident training, we also uh, provide an in-depth education platform. So we cover uh, more than 20 different topics ranging from how to understand or analyze an email to how to surf the web properly, security beyond the office, physical security, um, and all these topics and training modules are delivered via the web. They're all interactive, they're all engaging, very concise. They take anywhere between three and 15 minutes to complete, depending upon the, the topic and the employee. They're all self-paced. We don't include any video or audio, because basically uh, research shows that audio and video training do not have the, the positive and sustained impact that more interactive uh, training has. And all of our training is focused on helping the employee understand the concept and applying them to real world situations. Then comes the conditioning through reinforcement and, and, and repeating. Our goal is to help the employee develop concepts, to keep these concepts top of mind and more importantly, condition them to use these concepts uh, at the time when they're most needed. So when it comes to simulated attacks, it's, we're, we're trying to develop, uh, I'll call it muscle memory. That is, in the same way that an athlete uh, is trained on a certain technique and then practices over and over and over again until in game situations, they don't have to think about the, the action. Their body just takes over and reacts automatically. That's the same type of conditioning that uh, we've deployed with, uh, with our training and simulated attack methodology, where through constant simulated attacks, positive training reinforcement, uh, and providing the end user an easy way to report a simulated attack, we're able to condition them to look at each and every email coming into their inbox with the same scrutiny and the same keen eye. And that this unique approach does deliver quantifiable results across a variety of different industries. So we've, we've seen it in, in education, both at K through 12 uh, and, and higher ed. We've seen it in the energy space and professional services space. We've also seen it in construction and engineering, just to name a few. And these are just a few stats that uh, come from a variety of different uh, research groups that if, uh, if you're interested in getting some more information on these claims, uh, happy to provide that to you through, through iSecure. So the conclusions of this year's State of the Fish report 
It's important to understand that while our numbers show that the training and education is working, the threat of attacks are still high. Even with the encouraging progress in the use of security awareness and training programs, 76% of InfoSec professionals still report their organizations are being victims of phishing attacks. We need to understand that our end users and our efforts become more savvy so that the cyber, and, and so do the cybersecurity criminals. Our report shows that the volume of phishing attacks have slowed down, but also notes that many of the, that, that this may be a result of scammers embracing the old adage, quality over quantity. And phishing is an evolving threat. Continuous training methodology is effective. It's that simple. This is more than a moniker for us, but we believe in the data shows that a continuous cycle of assessing, educating, reinforcing, and then educating again can have measurable and positive results on your bottom line. And finally, if your current security awareness approach or solution is not delivering these types of results, you may want to explore your options. So with that said, that is the overview of the State of the Fish report. Um, the report is available uh, from the Wombat website. I know that, uh, that iSecure has access to that as well and would be happy to send that, uh, a link out to you to, to download that as part of the follow-up. And what I'm going to do now is open the floor to, uh, to questions.